Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we're going to focus on how to structure your interview answers. We have covered a lot of these topics before, but what we're noticing with our clients at practiceinterviews.com is this translation of those that have really good structure into getting the job offer. So let's focus on the three areas where questions are probably going to be the most common. So obviously those commonly asked questions, we're going to be focused on a rule of three. For open-ended questions, we're going to be focused on the CFS method. And for behavioral questions, we're going to be focused on the STAR method. If you can create this strong structure, create this strong foundation, you are going to have tremendous success in your interviews. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. So item one is the three types of questions. Let's get back to this a little bit. There are going to be questions that are going to fall a little outside of these potential three, but I don't want to focus too much on that. Let's focus on what we can anticipate, and 90% of our questions are going to be these commonly asked questions that are not behavioral questions. They're going to be the open-ended questions that are how or what questions that lack a lot of structure, maybe a hypothetical situation, for example, and then behavioral, tell me about a time when, give me an example of. So those are really the three types of questions I want to focus on today. Item two, let's talk about the importance of structure. And specifically, there are five areas where structure is really going to help you uptick your success. So first is actually brain connectivity. And what do I mean by this? I mean when we get on a bike or we drive a car, for example, most of the time we're using our old brain, we are on automatic pilot, but there's going to be these moments where we literally need to kick it into gear. And so I want you to think about this in the same way for the interview. I want you to be so structured that you're not going to really have to worry about the little details. You're just going to want to be thinking about the nuances of the question and specifically answering what's been asked of you. Second, organization. And where organization really shows up is where do we put the details and then chronological order? How do we order the items that we are presenting? So structure will just allow you to be really organized and set that appropriate stage for your interviewer to follow along with you. Third is level of detail. And so if you have your answers structured correctly, you can actually think on the fly and sometimes add these small layers of detail, but where this really shows up is behavioral questions. If you are super structured, you are going to be able to bring and incorporate a lot more details because of that structure. You won't be like basically shuffling through the story. You'll be rigid, you'll be on point, and it will really, really help. Fourth, communication. What structure does in your communication is it allows us to organize concepts at a very high level. So if we're introducing a story, we're introducing our details, we're introducing our frameworks, we are going to have that foundational flow that our competitors just are not going to have. And fifth is confidence. Why not create structure behind your answers so that when you go into the interview, you feel super confident one of the items I hear the most from prospective clients is, I want to up my confidence. Putting structure behind your answers is one of the number one ways you can have success. So let's dive in. Item three, open-ended questions. We're going to focus on CFS. So this is actually the first time that I'm introducing this concept, but it's really basic and I have talked about all these items before. So CFS, it's clarify framework, and then solution. And so if you structure your open-ended answers in this way, it's going to create great success, but it goes past CFS. You have to check in after every single step. And I just want to pause here for a second. If you don't clarify, then check in. Framework, then check in. And solution, oftentimes multiple solutions, and check in multiple times. This 
is not going to work. Okay, let's go through the items. So first, clarify. You can go in with a clarification plan, meaning you just have some plan questions, whether that's new versus existing, business versus tech, internal versus external. There are some generic questions that are almost always going to work. And why is this structure so important? Because if you go in with some planned questions, then it's going to be easier to think about questions that maybe have a little bit more specificity and are connected to what's actually being asked of you. It will take a little bit of the pressure off. Secondly, when you're thinking about how to clarify, it is absolutely paramount that you don't ask question, pause, ask question, pause. You want to kind of give one question, see if your interviewer kicks anything back. And then if Jane, your interviewer doesn't answer your question, spin the rest of your clarification into one bucket of multiple questions, multiple items of thought process. And then at the end, we check in. Hey, Jane, can you provide any additional information? Whether we get a response from Jane or not, the next item, the framework. And so I've extensively talked about frameworks. Basically, what you want to do is you want to have at least one. Multiple if you can, but start with at least one. And what a framework is, is it's just some of the high level concepts that you are going to want to communicate that you know are going to be important to the job. And why are frameworks so important? Because these structured concepts allow us to communicate recommendations. And those recommendations are going to specifically translate Jane taking you from a candidate to putting you in the role. So what's one of the best structured tricks or tips I have is creating the mnemonic. And so the mnemonic is just taking the first letter of each word in your framework and that will be your mnemonic. And so when we think about my pretty classic PM 101 framework, which is HBT RR Triple S, which is goals and objectives, historical data, budget, timeline, resources, risk, scope and scale, stakeholders, and shared vision, in order to get that mnemonic, which still isn't great, but it's okay, was I knew that goals and objectives and historical data had to come first, and I knew that shared vision had to come last, and everything else could be moved around. So that's the way I want you to think about your mnemonic. What needs to come first, what needs to come last, and what can be shuffled around to create something that's more memorable for you. Um, third is that we need to come in very, very high level with these frameworks. What does this mean? Typically clients are getting into the nitty gritty and getting into the weeds of the framework. That's not the point of the framework. The point of the framework is to come in very high level, give those four concepts, five, nine, 11, whatever the number of concepts is, and then kick it back to Jane. So what do I mean by this? Sometimes we'll add additional context to say goals and objectives. We'll say, I would wanna be looking at short-term and long-term goals and objectives, and that's just basic information, it's fluff. It's not adding any additional value, and you want every word that you say to add value. So when you think about delivery of the framework, you're actually thinking about 30 to 40 seconds. You want to quickly deliver it and then kick it back to Jane and say, hey, Jane, any of those concepts you want to focus on? Now, regardless of whether or not Jane gives you direction, the last step is the solution. And what's really tricky is not all these questions actually ask for a solution. Some are very, very high level, but regardless of what Jane has or has not given us, let's just chop a little bit into the solution. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is connectivity. So you have to go from your clarification to your framework to connecting it in the solution, meaning you're going to pull off of one or two concepts to start your solution that are going to be incorporated and a part of it. So you don't want to just be introducing concepts and then not pulling them into the rest of your answer. So the second and really critical item is that in your solution, you're just wearing the hat of the role. So regardless of how much ambiguity the question has, you are literally sitting in that position and digging into the details, making some assumptions. Again, 
you are not going to have all the information a lot of the time. Lastly is time. And the big piece with time and why it's so critical is we want to go back to connectivity. So think 60 to 90 seconds in your solution. There might be multiple solutions. You might have multiple iterations, but you don't want to talk for three or four or five or five minutes into your solution. And Jane really was excited about something you said, but you just kept going on and on and on. So you're going to hit a, one or two items from the framework, and then you're going to stop and say, Jane, do you want to dig into anything deeper that I mentioned from those items? Or do you want me to focus on a couple of other concepts that I initially introduced to you? Just create that good ebb and flow. Just remember, this structure, this methodology is terrible if you don't check in. The connectivity is critical for success. Item four, commonly asked questions. In this section, I really want to cover commonly asked questions that are not behavioral, meaning tell me about yourself, why should we hire you, what are your strengths, etc. Questions that are open-ended but very, very common and are going to need a specific structure. So how would we go about doing this with a rule of three? So First, I want you to go through the job description exercise. I'm going to pin that video up above. Essentially, scrape the job description, look for common words, common themes, and then secondly, you'll look for alignment. What are those words and themes where you align really well? They are your exact skills and strengths. And then third, you're just going to stick to them. So if you get all of those questions, you will thematically keep going back to those three concepts because it's critical that you are very, very consistent. And then the last piece that I would just want to mention is there's uh, two other rules of three on top of this rule of three, meaning for each skill or strength, you are going to want to have three adjectives that back that up that are pretty close. And you're going to want to have three examples that back up each one of those items too. It seems like a ton, but if you got three or four of these questions and you had all this backup, it would create great success for you. Just continue to think of that rule of three. Keep it in mind. It will really help you answer these types of questions. Lastly, nobody can give you time estimations, but I think you know on these questions, you're kind of thinking a minute or less. Keep it really short and concise, and then you'll throw it back to Jane and see if Jane wants you to go in more depth, provide a little bit more generic depth or an example. Item five, behavioral questions. We have spent a lot of time talking about the STAR method. And why do I like the STAR method? It is straight up structure. What it does is it creates structure around these examples. It allows you to go in and not wing it to be really organized. Do I really care if you use the STAR method? Actually, I don't. A lot of people like the PAR method, which just removes situation and task with problem. I actually even like the WAR method, which I came up while I was creating this video, which could be you could focus maybe on those five W's, then actions and results. It doesn't matter. The point is that structure in your behavioral answers is critical to success. So let's stick with the STAR method. I'm actually just going to do the SAR method, so situation, action, and results. And so with the structure, basically for a situation, there's just a few things you want to do well. You want to tell me your role, your company. If your role or company need context, please provide it. And then what was going on? Who was the client? What was the actual thing that you had to accomplish and move forward with? Think Disney movie. So I want it to be such a simple setup that a little kid could understand it. And I know it's maybe not that basic, but if you think about it in that way, don't get into the weeds of the tech or all the nuances of what was happening with the client. Set up that simple situation and then move forward for me because that's going to be critical. And how do you move forward into the next step of actions? It's a transition statement. The first thing I did, the first thing we did, the first thing I researched, it's an actual movement from a high level into what you did. And the number one thing you need to think about in terms of structure for your actions, think in bullets. And I literally am going to demonstrate this for you. So the bullet one is the action. And then indent 
and the supporting actions. And just think all doing. And then the other reason why that structure really works, it's just very simplistic to edit. So two concepts that are really important. Then the structure on the results. Just two major things I want you to be thinking about when it comes to the results. One, your first result is you deliver the answer to the question. What has been asked of you? Deliver that result. And then secondarily from a structure perspective, leverage, which shows up in two facets. It's usually going to show up in a process perspective that you were able to leverage across the organization, across multiple teams, or relationships. That could be internal, external, both. Because of this great result, it leveraged stronger relationships, and those relationships yielded success in other areas. Lastly is learnings. Everybody knows I love learnings, and the biggest thing to keep in mind here is just one or two structured items where it's one or two sentences. You're just coming in, you're saying what you learned, and that's just going to provide that additional value that shows your interviewer that you're a continual learner. Item six, prepare and practice. We do not need to spend a lot of time on this item. The structure will come from preparation. Then you're gonna to wanna to practice that structure with other people and then you are going to want to edit and repeat, repeat, repeat. That repetition is critical. There is a reason why I cover topics again and again. I want to build that repetition for you so that you get really comfortable doing these items. To sum up, structure leads to success. It's a lot of upfront work. You got to put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. But if you go into the interview with this structure, you are going to create great confidence for yourself and allow your brain to focus on the nuanced items where you need to be thinking a little bit more on your feet, create that ground layer where we don't need to do all the thinking on the day of our interview. Good luck.